Now that we have the software up, let's set the connection type to USB and select P drive step direction. The first set of tabs at the top cycle between various pages including a 4 channel scope, monitoring information, and general configuration of the motor and encoder to set parameters such as electronic gear ratios or following error windows. This tab is where we fill out the index move profiles. More on that later. The second set of tabs cycles between pages on the right hand side of the screen. These include tabs for an index tester, point to point moves, jogging, homing, tuning, and your I.O. setup. The last set of tabs is for saving configurations to the drive, software resets, and firmware updates. We can simplify this process by using the setup wizard. Here we will go online with the USB connection and read the parameters from the drive. As you can see, the drive is recognized in the software. We can name the drive or load a previous configuration file. Parker's P-Series motors are equipped with smart encoders that will automatically import their settings into the P-Drive. The P-Drive can handle many different control modes. For this example, we are going to dem be demonstrating both indexing and torque control mode. Here you can set up basic parameters for the index operation, like changing the coordinate system from a linear axis to a rotary axis, or changing the start index number. Analog torque command values can be set up for when the drive is put into torque mode. Next, we can select the positive and negative coordinate system for the rotation direction of the motor. Here we set up our electronic gear ratio. The top number is the number of pulses per rev from the encoder, and the convention we use in this example sets up the drive to have 1,000 units equal 1 degree of rotation. In the following sections, we set up the emergency stop torque, the dynamic brake control can be set up if the motor is equipped with a brake, and you can add internal or external torque limits. In our example, we set up the external torque limit to 3000, which equates to 300% of the motor torque. Here, we configure the drive's I.O. for various things like servo on, start, stop, positive and negative over travel switches, index inputs, and more. Here we have it set to default. Next, we can select the preferred homing method. The software includes helpful illustrations and descriptions of the various routines offered, allowing you to select the best routine for your application. Lastly, we can either save the configuration file or write it to the drive. If we write it to the drive, a software reset or a power recycle is required to apply the changes. Now that we've gone through the setup wizard, we can go online with the drive. The bottom left verifies we are connected. From here, we can see the smart encoder settings and other parameters set up in the wizard are updated in the various configuration tabs. The index edit tab is where we will set up our move profiles. This includes setting the index type, whether it be absolute, relative, or a registration move, the distance for the motor to move, the velocity, the acceleration, the deceleration, and the action to be carried out after the index is completed. These include stop, wait for start, and next index. If we select next index, we will need to specify which index number to move to next. Down here is where you can access indexes 8 through 64. These are called up using BCD Math, which is explained in more detail in the blog. In order to save these indexes to the drive, we must select Save Index to Double EEPROM. The indexer test on the right hand side of the screen can help us test our move profiles. We can turn the servo on and use ISIL 0 through 5 to select our binary numbers 1 through 64. Leaving ISIL 0 on equates to index number 1, which is a relative move of 4 rotations clockwise. Because the action is wait for start, this index will run when ISIL 0 is on and start is activated. On the first power up, the motor will move to the start index number, which in this case is index 0. If we just turn on ISIL 1, that equates to index 2, which is a relative move 4 rotations clockwise, then steps to index 3, which is a relative move 4 rotations counterclockwise.
Using the scope, we can monitor the feedback from our torque, position, following error, and other parameters that can help with tuning and optimizing the performance of the servo system. As we trigger our move profiles, the scope graphs the selected parameters. Here we can see that for this move, the motor is only using about 2.5% of its available torque, and our following error rose to a little over 600,000, which is about one revolution of the motor. Here we have the P-Drive indexer, a 24 volt power supply, the terminal block breakout module for the drive's I.O., and an analog signal generator to simulate torque mode, and a switchboard here to trigger the drive's I.O. So here we have this switchboard wired in for servo on. This is our start switch. And then these four switches right here are for our BCD math to call up the different index profiles we set up. So if I turn on this switch, it'll trigger index one. So when I hit start, it'll go to our start index, which is index zero. And every time I hit this switch, it'll perform our move of four rotations clockwise. Now if I turn this switch off and turn this one on, this corresponds to index 2, which is 4 rotations clockwise, and then stepping to index 3, which is 4 rotations counterclockwise. The P-Drive can also put the motor into torque mode, where it runs at a predefined torque that is set by an analog signal input. So as you can see here, when the analog signal is very low, I can stop the motor shaft by hand, but as I turn the signal up, it becomes much more difficult to try to hold the motor shaft as it's running at a much higher predefined torque. 